Alexander and I had worked together before. I had scored Nebraska, and he had me in mind early to score the holdovers. Um, actually came up here to Portland, where I live. Uh, we spent time in my studio here, listening to a lot of music and talking about music of the early 70s. The, the film takes place in right at the end of 1970, turning 71, over Christmas break at a boarding school in, in Western Massachusetts. The music wanted to really feel of the era, or at least not betray the era. Um, so some of it is actually really going after early 70s kind of like folk rock sounds, tying into some of the source score that's in the film, things like Cat Stevens. I knew from um, our earlier work that Alexander would be looking for something thematic. He's definitely drawn to the thematic side of my writing and also something um, that was a bit more kind of handmade, organic. And I worked away from picture a lot in the beginning. I wasn't even exploring uh, like, you know, direct to picture kind of writing. I was really just kind of writing songs that we could use to to seed the, the film. A film that feels like it's of a kind of bygone era in a way to be able to tie into some personal nostalgia. <laughs> One of the main themes first shows up uh, in the scene where the three main characters drive to Boston. And the theme is built around acoustic guitar, I'd say, and it's, it's kind of folkier, a kind of like traveling waltz in a way, built on multi-layered guitar tracks that I, I overdubbed. are driving around these country roads that I knew so well. It was just real easy inspiration for me that it was shot in and around Western Massachusetts, just a few miles from where I used to live. I did a bit more arranging also uh, with this than I sometimes do. Um, I had several themes that I really explored like theme and variations with. Um, one in particular, um, it shows up first in a kind of like uh, buoyant, like 6-8 jazz, uh, kind of like a jazz waltz feel. Um, it's underscoring uh, this moment where most of the holding over kids realize that they're going to get out of jail and head off on a ski trip with one of the rich dads in a helicopter. Um, it's an exciting moment in the film, especially for these for the kids. Um, it's followed pretty closely by a scene where Angus realizes that he's not going on the trip. He watches the helicopter take off, and I take that same theme. Um, and in this case, I'm scoring it for a, boy, for a boys' choir. It also adds a bit of drama to the scene, uh, and I, I think in a funny way. Uh, there's even a timpani hit at the end. Well, let's make the best of it, shall we? There's a theme of, of loneliness in the film, especially in the second act, after the school is cleared out and we're left with just three characters over this Christmas break that are holding over there. Um, I wanted to explore that musically. Um, I chose two instruments to do that, one being flute. I was using alto and bass flute and kind of taking long phrase breaks in the way I was writing as well so that the stuff was really spare. That ties into kind of an empty and lonely sound. Likewise, I used solo piano um, and kind of lower range piano too. It gets introduced at first in act one. It really is Mary's theme. It's first used in a scene where we're wandering around her apartment. And while it starts as Mary's theme, I actually morph the cue over the course of the film and use it in several other places. I want to explore kind of a broader instrumentation 
but also something a bit darker, a bit more unusual. I'm using things like Marxophone, which is kind of like an auto harp with uh, some metal tines that bounce on it. A little saloon piano-like, but also sort of dulcimer-like, and I also lean on a, on a big four-octave toy piano, which again is a kind of jankier version of a Celeste, tying into again that kind of would-be Christmas instrumentation, but kind of left-turn version of it. I'm a multi-instrumentalist. I kind of play all manner of keyboards and guitars and percussion. I knew this would be kind of a more performative score. I wanted to go after that, even at the early stages. So rather than, you know, mocking things up with MIDI or with, you know, fake instrumentation, from the get-go, I basically used live instrumentation, even hiring players before cues were approved. And that's not something that, that I often do. And I also knew that, you know, leaning kind of more organic and into the, um, the broader range of the instrumentation that I've collected over the years. So I'm, I'm getting a, a, you know, a cymbal arm. I'm using reed organs, some old free bass accordions, acoustic guitars, auto harps, marxophones, um, some like sort of bell percussion that I've had built for me, custom stuff. All of that worked its way in uh, to this, this real organic palette that we used for it. You know, I put together this rock band, and I knew that I wanted horns as well, on some of it at least. Um, rather than like doing a session call um, with some studio musicians, I'd worked with this great all-female sax quartet here in town on a bunch of different projects. They're called the Quadrophones. Um, they've worked together for years, and they have this fantastic ensemble sound that's kind of built in. It's like working with a great string quartet that has that, that kind of vibe. and you know, ESP-like communication. I think they really elevate the sound and it, it really hits that early 70s vibe. some real shifts in this film you know it starts off kind of Christmas time at a prep school with a big cast of characters another side to it which was kind of tying into the source score or the songs in the film with a rock band uh, instrumentation uh, really fun for me it's the stuff I grew up listening to it's the kind of music I was covering my first bands when I was still in grade school all in the context of such a fantastic film uh, with an incredible cast, this perfectly written story, and reunited with one of my all-time favorite directors. <laughs> 